It is, so uh, it is May fine. the 4th, 2024. I'm Chris, and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Hey, we're back. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We're back, and I finally got the date right. Um, Jeremiah, Adrian, how are you? How goes it? Well, I'm no. doing all right here in the UK. It's, it is a it's a bank holiday weekend. It's, it's the May Day weekend, so it's a three day weekend. Lovely. Um, it's Star Wars Day, um, and my boy <laughs> has asked fourth, me to yeah. take him to the cinema. So tonight we are going to see the Phantom Menace, the twenty fifth oh, nice. anniversary of the release of the Phantom Menace at Have our fun. local cinema. That would yeah. be great. Absolutely uh, so, fun. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, it's not, than... a bad, not, not a bad May Day weekend here. <laughs> Other than that, it is way too warm for the for the time of year where we're, where we live. <sighs> oh no, it's, it's been cold mostly here. The occasional warm day, but our we our weather is all over the place at the moment. Well, everybody's is. This is yeah, this yeah, yeah. bizarre. Here we mm -hmm. are in the explosion of spring. Uh, even though it is a little cloudy today, uh, everything is blooming like crazy, and so yeah, it's quite lovely here in California. We live on the countryside. There's like lawnmowers day in and out from somewhere. <laughs> All here right. We leaf, here we have leaf blowers. <laughs> yeah, well, us too, us too. Um, they are converting to electrical, which is much better. <laughs> how is your, how is your data? My data or the Adrian's two of you. data? <laughs> we'll, I'm asking, we'll have... I'm asking both of you. We're, we're talking, okay, you read the title. We're talking backup today yeah. and I, I, i'm just gonna jump right in and say just coincidentally and this had nothing to do because uh, these guys had no idea the hell that i went through this week in terms of backup and it seems that my backup plagues um have followed me for years and years as i pursue the perfect way to back up a couple <laughs> of terabytes of data uh, on my system uh, one and a half probably being photographs so and art so you're bringing us some good stories. That is nice. Um, let me let me let me let me run through what a backup is. Why we need it, just to get a few definitions out of the way first. Because um, I often f I often find that when I talk to people who are not in I who are not IT adjacent, that they don't really know what backup means. So what do we need backup for? Um, safeguard yourself against hardware failures. I think that's the top one thing you have your computer breaks your your disks break something something will break in a, if a computer is old enough something is very likely to break over time a parenthetical to that is like motorcycles uh it's either down or it's going down yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so Absolutely. uh theft theft of course someone snatches your computer from you um disasters fires or or floods as an example here, and then uh, just as a, as a protection against your own fat fingers, you know. Um, whoops! Oops, whoops! It's gone, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oops! I shouldn't have pressed the delete button oh, there. Yeah. But yeah, then that happens. So these are some reasons to have a backup, and um, what makes a backup a backup? Um, I think the the first, the really first, really important thing is. Um, a backup should be not called a backup. It should be called a restore. Oh, <laughs> right. Yes. That's a very Zen way of thinking about it, Chris. It, well, you know, I've I've had enough backups go um, sideways. Well, go apparently right and nice and perfect. And then later on, when you try to restore from them, it turns out that they are not good backups and you cannot properly restore from them. Can, can I give you an example of that? Well, maybe not the restore thing, but I, because I want to give it an example, because that's the, I, I'm, I'm the cause of this topic right today. And I think I sort of you know, mentioned it briefly on a couple, a couple of shows ago, but I need a new solution for backing up my photos and videos um i uh yeah but you my, have icloud well i do and it works really well and do you know what and i don't have any problems restoring because there's some stuff i had uh, as part of the, the the prepping for getting a new backup solution because i do need one come back to that in a sec 
I have actually been downloading stuff that I only had in iCloud. Uh, and it's working really, really well. I have to say the Apple Photos app doing download, doing exports is working really, really well. I haven't had any problems with it at all. Uh, there's actually that, that's not true. There's, there's a, a, a small number of a handful of files that have, have not come down properly. And, you know, uh, I, uh, that, but, but nothing you know, drastic. Um, but there's a couple of things that reasons that prompt me to do this. Right. To, one is that um, I, Apple only offer you two terabytes of space and I'm kind of running out. So I, I, I need something you know, that, that allow, that's a bit more expandable and scalable now. Uh, and the second reason is I went back in time in, in my iCloud library uh, a little while ago, a couple of months ago. And I noticed that a lot of things were in the wrong dates. So, you know, you, you, you cruise through in your photos app that the, you can choose by date, or by year and by month. And you can drill down into your photo library. And a chunk of stuff was in the wrong year or, or month Ouch. or stuff like that. So I was like, well, how did that happen? Um, and of course, you don't get given any tools in iCloud to make any proper adjustments to those sorts of things, at least not at scale. I think you could do a little bit of EXIF editing these days, but nothing that would allow you to redate thousands of photos or, 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 or even find out which ones were wrong. So, so yeah, it's interesting. So could the... Be. Uh, could be a philosophical um, issue that really uh, calls into question the nature of time itself. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I was going. Yeah, or quantum mechanics. Don't, even, don't go I quantum mechanics on us. Here. Yeah. So I think quantum mechanics might be to blame. Um, uh, yeah, and entropy and uh, the heat death of the universe. That's also to blame. Yeah. Um, and I think we'll throw Schrodinger's cat in there for good measure, shall we? I think. I think. <laughs> I think so. the cat. I think the cat ate my photos. Right, but the uh, the. But I mean, I haven't, as far as I'm aware, I haven't lost anything. And most of it I had, um, you know, I've had always had offline backups for. There was only a small amount of it that I've never had uh, or offline backups for that have only been sort of cloud native, as it were. But yeah, I need I need to do something different now. So yeah, I thought, well, what, who better to ask than my photography buddies and all the people that I that listen to this show, uh, please hit me up in the discord because i need some help i need to know about services that are out there that you like or dislike yeah what would you recommend what would you say mm. stay away from um I, I mean obviously we have a rule of thumb in this <clears throat> podcast that we stay away from anything that jeremiah uses because it routinely locks <laughs> up his internet connection <laughs> <laughs> okay so one one that fast <laughs> one parameter that is really important is a, is a backup is only a true backup if it has versions as in, Ooh. if you can go back okay. to a specific point in time, if, because if you, if you work on a file and you overwrite this, it gets backed up. You overwrite it again, it gets backed up. And if you only keep the last version of that thing, you might have messed things up a week in the past and things are overwritten now. That's, Chris, um, that's you, the case for, let's say sure. you have, you're on a Mac, you have Time Machine, um, just plug in a disk and it does that for you and it backs up the system and it uh, uh it versions it so you can go back to last thursday at 5 p.m i mean you learn this when you're you know when you're writing um a screenplay or a teleplay that yeah. as you move through because writing is rewriting as we know and you you go through many many different versions right up to production and you learn very quickly that every time you save your document you save as you rename it uh, whether it's version A, B, C, V1, B2, ah, that's, etc. That's how the final, final, really final dot, uh, dot doc comes into being, right? Yeah. Final, really final, yeah. absolutely final. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> Do not change. No question. So that, that, this that's is a, the final version, version two. <laughs> that's that's a handmade version of of uh, a, a handmade kind of versioning. But another thing that is important for a uh, true backup is that it ha it cannot depend on you doing something manually because then it will not happen over time it has to be automated automatic um and it has to happen at regular intervals that that there's no way you can mess it up by forgetting to plug in a disk or doing something 
So, so Chris, then you're not a fan of the off-site backup, then, which would require oh, you to I do am. something. I am. I do have a daily off-site backup. It goes onto a server in the cloud that is off-site. Ah, uh, okay. So, so yes, sorry. So yes, good point. I should have been more specific, but yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's another off-site where you have a disk and you take it to your to your parents uh, once a week or something, um, and that's perfectly fine. The I think one one consensus that you hear often and that I also support is what we call the three to one method, which means your data should be in three places, as in on your computer and on two backup destinations. Um, it should I adhere to that. It should be on two different media, as in not on the same hard drive, but on different hard drives. Mm. Yeah. So that's the two in three, two, one. And the one is one offsite copy, which means one copy that is that lives somewhere else. And there are multiple ways to do it. Um, and uh, and that's that's what I do. I do have uh, like a, a local time machine backup, which in itself uses two drives. One is my NAS that's in the basement, and the other is a local disk. So... Uh, what Time Machine then does is it does a round robin. It does one backup to that destination and the next one to that destination and the next one to the first destination. So you always have like alternating. Can you do that automatically? Burdens. It happens automatically. There's nothing That's you have cool. to do. I didn't realize you could do that with, with Time Machine. It does that. You can have a, a whole bunch of different backup destinations for, for Time Machine. And on different schedules too. Yeah, and on different schedules. There, there are schedulers. There's like external apps where you can define your your own schedule by default it does it like once an hour and uh, uh, can i throw a little spanner into the works before we get into the pathways that we each have used and and um the the dangers thereof but before digital photography what did you do to back up all your negatives uh copy them have them copied the negatives themselves yes well there, there, there were services that would duplicate negatives which means sure. of course in an analog world you have a some form of degradation but um i've i've heard i've never really seen anyone do it but i've heard of services and of photographers who would have their i don't know their code of chrome slides um duplicated by a specialized company just to have a safe copy somewhere else. The problem is they pick up so much contrast when they do that, or they did oh. at that time, yeah. And but but better but better that <clears throat> than uh, losing your entire archive in a, in a fire. Yeah. So w we could definitely say that having um, the digital platform now makes it a lot easier in many ways to back up, a, a, you know, 50,000, 100,000 photos. We could just agree on that because having a hundred thousand negatives or shots on strips of negatives is not a practical way of protecting your negatives. I mean, I, I have negatives from the seventies um, on, and they are, you know, they're well stored, they're careful, but you know, they're not vaulted. Um, probably they should be, but um, I have digitized. Uh, some of them, and that way they go into the system. But why don't we ask um, each other, what, what processes do you do from the point of capture to a restore? Because I agree with Chris that it's, it is all about restore. And then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what I've done. And, and even in my careful planning and, and manifestation of, of the stuff that's out there still run into some technical problems that had nothing to do with me, but a, um, uh, you know, problems of two companies, two operating systems that clash and change everything. And so that's coming. Stay tuned. Oh, and so, by the way, we should also say that the the amount of effort you put in there is, of course, also related to how important these pictures are to you yeah so, if you have so, yeah if you that, have, and that, that's especially true if you don't for me, care actually. about your photos then you don't have to do a backup well so so the, yeah you you um you know throw a stone and you'll hit 
20 YouTubers who've all published a video that's called why nobody cares about your photography, right? So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so why should I care about my photography if nobody else cares about it? I mean, I, I, I have the luxury of, of this being purely a hobby for me. I'm not making any money out of this stuff. Uh, so if I lose the odd one here or there, or if, you know, th then, you know, no, no big deal for me, right? I'm not looking for, you know, for a hundred percent perfection, even if that was achievable, you know, but I do want something that I can set up and, you know, can be reliable, um, uh, including the restore. It'd be great if, uh, you know, it could do more than back up the originals. It could back up adjustments, versioning, a really good point, Chris. And I'd completely forgotten about versioning as, as a thing um uh so that that's interesting um so yeah it's, you know, it, 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 it's a whole sort of asset management question i think yeah, i have at the moment it, it, and it is i mean i think you you hit the nail on the head it is about managing your assets initially um i mean when i when i do my captures and i bring it into my main computer uh the first thing i, I do is i put it into a folder in lightroom um, and then as I kind of pull out the photo, download it to the desktop to edit or edit within Lightroom, depending on what tools I'm using, that automatically will save a version of it, whether it's uh, Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, and I can choose to save it as a version, and which I do. Uh, I could save a copy and then re, you know, rename it. Or um, just basically leave it on Adobe's Lightroom uh, as a version. So if I ever go back on it, I can see multiple versions. The Lightroom library, then, I back up. And I back it up several ways. I back it up off-site. I use something called Backblaze. I also use Lightroom. I also use um, uh, iCloud. So uh, Time Machine. So my time machine is running and also my backblaze is running. So I have two offsite cloud backups uh, and they back up a lot, all the data, but they also include the, um, the Lightroom catalog. That's, can I, can I ask you a couple of questions that cause before you go on to the next bit, cause actually that's interesting. So I haven't used time machine for years and it never used to have a cloud capability. Um, so, so if you use Time Machine now, will it will it copy? No, it backs back up to another drive. Yeah, my Time okay, Machine so. backs it up to a drive, but the drive yeah. itself is backed up. Okay, right. So that's, that's interesting. And the other thing is is um, Adobe, right? So uh, anybody that's listened to the show for a while will knows that I, I I don't use Adobe products currently, right? I I, I stopped doing that some years ago. Uh, but yeah, any conversation about new backup solutions and and any uh is, has got to include the option about well what about adobe right so last yeah what well, last time i used adobe products the light the new version of lightroom was very new right um and uh yeah i don't and the the cloud backup elements of it and the, and the phone app for Lightroom and stuff like that were all very new um, and you couldn't get much storage and, and things like that. So uh, I would imagine they've matured quite a lot in the last few years, have they, those solutions? Yeah, they have. But I think Skylum now will kind of create a library for you and on Luminar. I'm just really kind of diving yeah, it does, into it. it. I mean, it, we, it does. Sorry. Without be becoming too specific about what service does what, I think that's at least something that uh, if you want to make a backup, have a look at what the services do that you have your pictures on. As yeah. in, does does uh, Creative Cloud make backups? Do you have some versions you can go back to in case you mess up something? Right. Good, yeah. good point, Chris. So, yeah, so, I mean, you know, from a Luminar not Neo point of view, uh, the Skylum stuff, uh, I mean, it doesn't have a cloud service behind it. Um, but it does it does work natively from pictures in folders and it does create its own database of you know, uh, non-destructive adjustments. So so you have access to, to copy both of those. And I guess that's fairly standard, isn't it? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking to change the tooling I have necessarily. It's, it's the backup stuff yeah. and, the, and, and well, of course, the restore. So. The easiest thing also is just to have a backup drive. I mean, I used, stop laughing, 
in advance here. I used Drobo for many, many years. I had a 16 terabyte Drobo drive, a NAS basically, it's connected to my entire system. Um, and it functioned absolutely beautifully. It, you could hot swap it. It indicated if one of the drive sectors was dodgy and you could replace it and it would rebuild it on the fly. So you never had to unplug it, restart it. It was always functioning. And then Drobo just went south, the company itself. Well, and the quality went south because um, I and a bunch of people, a few quite famous people, had data loss on a Drobo. Yes. And that made the rounds and that was for yeah. me that, that was a that was the the me too. The, the the final straw. Me too. Um, they they didn't pay attention. Right. So with with again, without getting too specific, you want uh, to check if the services that you use do backups and give you at least a couple of versions to go back to. Um that is I think very important. Like if you have your iCloud photos, that's not a backup. That's just one copy. And if you delete it from your uh, from your Mac, it will be deleted on your iPhones as well. So, yeah, so, um, so Chris, let me let me ask then, because yeah, I think um, any application that creates a database of or, or any way of recording, because um, sometimes some of you sidecar files don't know that that's quite old fashioned these days. But any any editing application you use that that does non-destructive editing, you could always take a backup of the file, a backup of the database, or a backup of the sidecar file using another method. Uh, uh, is there a thing, and are there any tools out there that you are aware of that would allow you to step back through versions of your edits? And I don't mean necessarily stepping back as in undo, redo, because some, some will give you many, many steps of undo, right? But that's not the same as a version, is it? So, Well, so, we, we, we're, we're kind of, the problem is the, the same word, version, is being used in different contexts here. Like right, okay. in Lightroom, for example, yes, you have versions of your file. Um, you go back and, and have pretty much 100% of all your edit history you can go back in, into. Yeah. Um, but then on the outside, yes, it's files. There's a catalog file, which is your database. There's the image files. And uh, if that's all on the same drive, which it typically is, then you have uh, something like Time Machine or whatever other like daily backup thing you use um, that takes care of those. And then you could have multiple versions of your of your database of your catalog and go back to one that is like if you go back to the one from last week, then all your changes that you did in between will be lost, right? Right. But in it, and but if in you're using, some, oh sorry, go ahead. But in in some apps though, can you you when you're working from files on a hard drive, you can take a virtual copy. Uh, you know, say say in an album, you can say duplicate this image, and you'll still have the one original raw file on well, the disk drive. But then you'll have two versions of it in an album where you can do two different. That is that is only a logical thing on top of the actual file. I mean, Light Lightroom is yeah. completely non-destructive; it will not change the underlying raw file. So that's pretty much one of the big selling points there. You do not overwrite files; you just create versions are kind of on top but again that's not the backup thing you want to back up the files underneath or the database yeah and and the, and the local time machine thing totally fine again my, mine puts it on two different destinations in the house one in the basement one hooked up to the computer um and then i do have a nightly cloud backup that takes whatever has changed throughout the day the delta that that has changed and puts it onto a server in the cloud yeah, I mean, I, I basically do the same thing. Um, I do notice, you know, when I when my Drobo went down and I was looking at RAIDs, and, and I have a lot of um, problems with RAIDs because it's easy for the, li you know, I have, what would you call it, the, the library, the, the, the traffic cop that directs all of the um, data into the right sectors. If that goes down... Uh, you are hard pressed to recover. Well, it depend, uh, depends on the on the kind of uh, NAS that you use. Um, yeah, there's 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 different ones. The one that I personally use is Synology, which yes, that replaced Drobo basically, which works which works 
just fine, doesn't need too much maintenance, um, can can do pretty much the same thing that a Drobo did, as in you can pull out a drive and put another yeah. one in. Is it, um, is it still good practice, Chris, to have a hardware RAID controller rather than relying on software RAID? Is that still a thing these days? Because it used to be years ago. Well, uh, why are you asking that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because uh, because years ago, last time I was regularly using a RAID, uh, or last time I bought uh, a RAID array, it was the the good practice was to make sure that your RAID that the RAID controller, the thing that the traffic cop that Jeremiah has just described, actually was a hardware unit rather than a software rather than something where you just had disks and it was a software application that managed it. You know, in in the end, whatever works and has the has the reliability i don't really care what it does i mean Synology runs a linux operating system but with its own skin on top and um i don't even know what they do but i don't care because i have had this system running for 10 years now and it's been i had a few disks die and replace them and it was just it was just working okay for me but again this is has no, nothing really to do with the backup that's just storage right this the backup is a logical thing on top of that storage so whatever you do um the versioning the copying of files that have changed uh during the day um that is the backup on top and the destination if you have enough destinations then any of those can die and you are still uh, on the safe side yeah i mean okay, I, that I, sounds I much have, better <clears throat> i keep my um Lightroom files on an outboard drive because mm -hmm. obviously it's got a big, big, big. Um, and I regularly, well, I back up that drive regularly using Backblaze. Um, and I also occasionally, um, you know, every quarter, I'll make a complete clone of it and take it off site. Um, so there's an absolute clone. Also, if I'm using my laptop on the road, then I can have a copy, absolute copy of my system uh, or my, you know, my photos specifically, um, just totally seamless on my MacBook Air, whatever hotel room I find myself in. But I, I also, you know, I'm obsessed with that. And Backblaze, which has been really, really good, stopped um, backing up my system. Uh, at a certain point. In other words, we would back it up, and this is probably, could be not specific to Backblaze, because their customer service was fantastic. It was so good trying to track this down. Why did it stop backing up at a certain point? And turns out it would... You stopped paying. <laughs> <laughs> That's one reason. Yeah. <laughs> no, that the Lightroom backups themselves because Lightroom backs up its catalog and I had this is my theory I had about a, a year of backups and it got really jammed up backups that I didn't need I only mm. need the last few and so I went into the system and deleted a bunch and that kind of freed the space but they also told me um, that it probably every once in a while to start and do a completely fresh backup if you've been doing that a long time um, I also had the misfortune of having a wrong setting on Dropbox. Shall we talk about Dropbox, which I oh, okay, which yeah. is not which is not a backup. It's a it storage location. It's a destination that's right. for that's for backups. If you want to put a backup there, that's right. But it doesn't play well with iCloud, no. and they often conflict. And I ran into that problem of last week. All of a sudden my one terabyte drive, internal drive on my Mac mini said, you're out of space. You have like 300 megabytes. I work in huge files and it's like, I don't understand why everything's outboard. Well, it turns out that Dropbox, which I had used for some files, had been duplicating the libraries of some of these things and putting them back into iCloud. It, it, it's massive it's, headache. It, it it can get a bit convoluted, um, especially if you have multiple things that need to play nice with each other. That yes. just is there's always a possibility. So So um, life lesson here. 
Start simply with... If you have a Mac, plug in a disk, make it a time machine disk. It should be bigger than your actual internal hard drive. And at least have that, and then maybe put a yes. second destination somewhere um, in the house if you have a if you have a, a, a NAS somewhere, a network attached storage. By the way, I have to mention none of the products we talk about here is a sponsor, or we're, we're not affiliated to any of those. It's just what we use. I think um, you can tell that by what we're saying about them, Chris. <laughs> Well, we're, we're singing the praises of Backblaze, which is a good solution. Um, oh, and then uh, well, you say that, but but yeah, Je Jeremiah's Backblaze running has just caused him to drop off the call. So. I'm not sure if it's him, but he just disappeared from the video. He should be back in a second. He'll be back um, in a second. Yeah. So so uh, oh, here yeah, he is, there we go. Again. He's back. Yay! What happened? What happened? We cannot hear you. Um, no, I can hear him. Re refresh. I cannot reconnect, please. Something is strange. Anyway, um, so I have this is a good bit. If we don't edit that bit out, Chris, this is a good way of, of yeah, we'll showing a in. real world example of how things can go wrong with technology, right? And why yes. you need a backup. So that's all good. Are you back? I am. Yes, you are. Good. Excellent. Um, so I let, let me make two product recommendations again. Not affiliated, but it's what I use and it's it's what works for me. Um, the one is a is a is a piece of software called Arc A R Q. Okay, uh, is available for the Mac and for Windows, and it can run in the background and do pretty much similar what what Backplace does, um, which is I think not available here in Germany. So that's why I'm uh, using this one. Um, allows you to yeah do like hourly backups, daily backups, and so on. I use it for my nightly cloud backups. Um, and then as the destination, because yeah, there are free ones, but we had a lot of the a lot of cases where someone like Amazon offered free storage, and then after half a year, when they had enough uh, customers, they made it expensive, and then. It, the free went away because it needs to be somewhere there need to be hard drives and things for this data and that's expensive so uh, i pay for storage now arc can have a lot of different destinations including amazon s3 which is a uh, big s3 as in storage um i don't even know what the three stands for but it's i think it's it, simple storage server something ah, like that. something like that yes so uh, pretty much uh, a lot of like Companies use S3 to put their files, um, and they have like petabytes of files, which is like thousands of terabytes of of, of storage there. So you can pay by the gigabyte or something, um, and it, that gets quite expensive quickly if you put a, like a terabyte or two terabytes up there for, for your backups. Um, there's another service that has been around for a while, and they are S3 compatible. Um, it's called Wasabi. And okay. Wasabi, I've been using them for a while. Uh, they, 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 have, they have the big irons. They, um, they have a, like a storage calculator on their website, a, a price calculator, and it starts at one terabyte, and then you slide this up, um, and it goes up to like 10 petabytes so oh, okay they but tell they, me what, they, what, what do they charge for two terabytes just as a as um, an example i don't i can't even put the slider that that low i think oh, one okay, terabyte no. one terabyte is like is like uh, seven dollars okay, a, a month right okay yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty so i i have i have like four or five terabytes on there and i pay for it but um and i had to use it maybe a couple of times in years. But for those couple of times, I would have been in deep trouble if I hadn't had the backup. You're so talking about restore. You had to restore. I had to restore uh, files from there a couple of times. Uh, a backup is usually something that you never wish to use. But Yeah, absolutely, yes. So I, I do test my restore like every other month. Um, I pick a two, three files from these services and restore them to a temporary location just to see if they if they are still there and if I yeah, get I the right the files back. I do the same. Just to be safe. So that that is my solution. I have Arc um, as the software. And again, that supports like 10 different kinds of look, uh, destinations. 
And uh, I use Wasabi as my storage for the backup. And that has been working fine for me. But if, if, you, if you're in the United States, Backblaze is fine. You pay a monthly fee and you can back up your entire system to it. Um, runs in the background. Sometimes it gets in the way of of our video conferences here, but... Um, I don't think you can back up the whole thing. I don't think it'll back up your operating system. Uh, okay, but but if, if your computer dies, you can get your operating system back. Exactly. And and you have Time Machine. So right. Time Machine will do a much more sort of uh, Do you know, I had completely forgotten local. about Time Machine. I'm sure that I guess there must be a, a Microsoft equivalent of Time Machine or, or, or a leading product that will do there the same is, thing. There is, but so. the name escapes me. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I and and, it's, and with, with a Mac, it's built into the system. You don't have to yeah. buy anything. On Windows, I think it's an external product. I'm not... And I think... Uh, pl please, please correct us. Please correct the us. Other, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do the time machine thing. I had completely forgot about it. You and don't think, have to. Yeah, it used to take a long time. But, of course, nowadays, um, last, last time I used it, and it took a long time, is because it was all spinning disks in those days. And oh, I'm still using state. a spinning disk for my time machine, for my local time machine. Oh, ah, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's the cheapest. I have like a fourteen terabyte disk hooked up to my time machine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which oh, yeah, has yeah, like a, a bunch of temporary stuff. Stuff that is, if if I lose that disk, if I lose the backups on that disk, I still have my system, so it's not too big of a problem. Yeah. Um, Do you use it for scratch disks for editing and things? For like that? for some cases, I use it. Yes. When when I have big things that need to be, because oddly, uh, what is temporary? The first, first things that happened when when I had this cascade of of problems last week is you know launched Photoshop did it and it said like no you can't you can't do any editing you're out of memory on your scratch disk and I said like what <laughs> that <Yeah>. never happened <laughs> so I had to go in there and go like what you know change what that is and now I've solved all of these but. Um, backing up and restoring are, um, if, if you have a lot of images and you kind of depend on them in a way for your, whether it's your legacy, your kids' photos, uh, your living, if you're a commercial photographer, uh, videos, etc., you really want to make sure that you have a system that not only you feel will work, but that you test. Because these things consistently and constantly are changing based on upgrades. And upgrades are not consistent throughout the network. In other words, you can have a operating system upgrade, you can have a storage system upgrade, you can have a application upgrade, and they're not always working together hand in fist. So it's important always to stay ahead of that. And it's, it, it could be perceived as, well, it's boring and kind of, I guess if you, it, it's like shoveling snow if you live in that kind of climate. It's something that, I mean, if you want to take the car out and you have a big snowfall, you have to shovel the snow and you may not like it, but that's the cost of living where you are and driving. So I think that it's an important lesson for people because if you lose your data, there's nothing more sickening in terms of the feeling of like, oh God, it's gone. I and you know why I'm so adamant about my backups and the, why I do the belts and suspenders uh, thing? Because I lost, at one point, half a year of photography. <sighs> like, lost, as in gone. gone. And oh, no. yeah. that, was, that was, and I used to be in my, in my former life, in my job, I used to be in, in a backup-related job. So... Um, ha having that happen to me out of out of sheer stupidity, um, not not backing up a disk, an external one that I should have backed up, um, that was one of the most painful experiences. So, yeah, burned my fingers. Yeah, and not so, gonna not gonna touch that stove again. No, make copies and make yes. copies of the copies and put them in safe places. Have it automated. Use, uh, think think three two one. If you Google that three two one backup, um, you'll find information about that. And uh, use what your system gives you, and have that offsite copy. If you have to do it manually, then by all means put it in your calendar and remind yourself every week to take that. I mean, have two two time machine discs hooked up to your computer and unplug 
take turns plug one in uh, pl unplug one and bring it to your parents and then the next weekend you swap those two discs and yeah, rotate um, it. yeah you can do a round robin a manual round robin but then by all means make it part of your routine yeah because w if you ever get into a situation where you, you have a complete failure of your system the worst that could happen is you go and you get another computer plug it in, restore, and it's there. And, you you know, you may lose uh, a day or two just in kind of reconfiguring. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if, if the cloud backup is your only backup, then you might lose a couple of weeks to get everything back. <laughs> By the way, I've been I, on Backblaze, just a side story. In order to solve this problem, I what we decided is I would re-register as a new user. They would keep the old backups, and I would re-back up my entire system. Mm -hmm three four weeks and 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 for uh for uh, some some of these online services might even offer you like a, a disc that you put in the, that you post yeah, they, to them so on, so on. anyway anyway th this this is th this can by no means be exhaustive what we do here it it is scratching the surface of something that um has its own complexities but it doesn't have to be complex if you just plug that disk in and then uh, and then answer, answer your <laughs> max prompt. Uh, do you want to make this a time machine disk? And you go, yep, sure. And then that Back is up. already there. That's what we're saying. Back up. Back up your data. Good stuff. Thank you guys for your, your advice. All right. Um, let's get to the picks. We do have uh, three picks. And I'm opening the macro room first what is the macro Ooh. room it's just really uh, hard to explain but uh it's a very interesting photographer who seems to be able to combine ultra slow-mo and regular speed in um single sequences and they are absolutely Beautiful. They're, they're ah, I see. I've quite seen anything like this before. Worth exploring because you'll, you'll see things that um, I don't think you've seen before. A very that is original. really interesting. I'm loving the show reel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. That is cool. I'll yeah. probably lots lots of lots of but he also, video links. He'll things. do things like he'll be standing there talking in kind of real time and then drop something which will be in ultra slow motion as he's gesturing and so he'll I guess create a mat and but it's quite complicated. Well, it's lo lots lot of, of editing in there for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here you here you go. Let's see. The one with the grapes. So this is the this is a, a, a follow yeah. the link. There's a video. Look at that. <laughs> this is good. So he just dropped a remarkable. bunch of grapes in in uh, in a slow mo, and it turned into wine when falling into the glass. <laughs> Look and at that. It's just nice, nice stuff. Um, very beautiful. There work. goes my evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm, very clever. <laughs> Worth looking at this guy's work. Yeah. All right. Um, Photo London. Ah uh, yes, Photo London. So uh, this is the the annual uh, Photo London e event. Uh, all sorts of exhibitions and things going on. Uh, I couldn't um, do it justice in just a couple of minutes. Um, but uh, recall, I went to the photography show a couple of months ago, and uh, yeah, we were going to do a compare and contrast of of, of what, once I've been to both. Well, Photo London is in a couple of weeks' time. So uh, just for anybody that's in the UK or or be traveling to the UK. Uh, uh, check out uh, the website in the link uh, in the show notes um, and there'll be some fun stuff to go see while you're in London May 15th to 19th 2024 awesome and last but not least I brought us a project you know Intrepid mm. the camera makers yep. from the UK yeah. um, they make large format cameras and they also have a I think it's still a development project. It's the Intrepid Lens and Shutter project. So uh, one big problem is if you get into large format photography is getting lenses and finding like pretty much only used lenses. And um, there's still a, a few on the market, of course, but um, I don't think anyone is 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think anyone is making new large format lenses these days. So um, they have started their own project and uh, um, they have a documentation here on their blog about, <clears throat> um, about their prototypes and how they put this together and then they used an old Copal shutter and then they uh, found out that it's probably a good idea to build your own shutter and they uh, keep, keep, keep the development progress up to the point even having their own computer controlled shutter for large format lenses that, that's very nice. impressive because that's very, it's very nice do. yes and uh and the and the you see over the blog you see the the example images that get better and better so apparently they are doing a good job at building their own lens and their own shutter i don't know if it's going to be a product probably that's the goal but um cool intrepid you might be able to at one point buy a lens and a shutter from them which is cool. awesome. Very New nice. large format stuff is pretty cool. Good. All right. So that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, let's see. What have we learned? We have learned that uh, backing up is important. We have learned that you want three copies of your data on two media and one offsite. Uh, we have learned that just copying data somewhere is not a backup. Um, that versioning is kind of important and uh, we have learned that there's software out there that can help you do that and automate it so you don't have to do it manually all right well, anyway I've learned, I've learned that I've got lots of stuff to do and some, some research <laughs> and some thinking to do uh, so there I will report go. back on what I choose all right we'll be back uh, pretty soon until then everyone take care follow us and uh, bye 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 You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 